Welcome back to charikas.com and no doubt if you've seen our videos for the past two years or so, you know that BMW has been getting it right with their EV four-wheelers. But it poses the question, what about their EV two-wheelers? Well, as you can see here, we got two examples of the BMW two-wheel EVs in the C04 and the smaller BMW C02. So in today's video, we're going to answer your question, what's so good about these two e-bikes? Let's find out. My name is Torik Azmi. And I'm Mukhles. And you're watching charikas.com. Okay, before we proceed, let me address the elephant in the room. I'm sure many of you are already familiar that Muklis and I review mostly cars, but for context, I will add that both Muklis and I are daily motorcyclists ourselves. So you can trust our word about what we have to say about both BMW e-bikes today. Right, with that out of the way, let's get to know our bikes a bit better, starting with the BMW CE04, the Mac Daddy of the two, if you ask me. And it really is in terms of size and dimension because positioned as a maxi scooter, this is one of those things that really puts the maxi in that term. It's maxi the length alone is over 2 meters long. In fact, the wheelbase itself is over a meter and a half long. It's 855 millimeters wide, but thankfully, the seat height is very low. It welcomes just about anybody. And I will also add that it's not only large, it's actually quite heavy. So first timers, be warned, this bike tips the scale at about 231 kilos. Okay, not only big, the BMW C04 does look quite pretty at some angles, especially if you come down low right here, because from here you can see the way the windscreen, the full LED headlights and the fairings, plus the front wheel cover is arranged. It looks very, very futuristic. In fact, over here, it reminds me of Canada's bike from Akira. Now, the wonderfully weird design quirks continue down the side profile where you will find that the C04 has this floating long bench of a saddle and I think it fits the bike's look. But what's very interesting down this side of the C04 in particular is this section right here because just like most maxi scooters, the C04 offers a very large storage bin. In fact, this bin is large enough to house a large size open face helmet or in the case of today, what I've done here is I've carried my three pin charger around in here. Quite nifty. And the interesting design quirks continue in the rear where you will find that the C04 rocks a single sided swing arm that exposes one side of the wheel. The wheel is a steel 15 inch unit by the way and it really matches the look of the CE04. Over at the rear you will find that the CE04 rocks a very interesting tail tidy and tail light setup. In fact both these lights they are dual function. They serve as brake lights and signal lights and as you come towards the rear on this side you will find the exposed belt drive which I think looks really cool plus the exposed offset rear shock. So it gives that very mechanical and there's no other way to put it it's just very out there and I like it. All right, life behind the bars in the hot seat of the CE04 is actually very interesting because there's a lot of tech that make this bike a lot easier to ride on the daily wheel. Starting with that massive and very rich full color 10.25 inch TFT display, which gets matched with this very interesting and very useful and intuitive switch gear on the left side of the handlebar. In fact, these are the same stuff you will find in higher end BMWs like the C400 scooters, the 1250 GS and the 1250 RT. They also offer Bluetooth connectivity so you could connect with your smartphone through the BMW Connected app to get navigation instructions and you could also separately connect your Bluetooth comms and control it here. So I find that very nifty. Other things that make this bike very, very easy on the daily include keyless ignition. And down here, you will find a small little glove box compartment, which is actually a dedicated smartphone hold, complete with a USB-C charging port and a small cubby to put your wallet or perhaps your key fob. All right, so for the CE02, you can see it is a much smaller bike compared to the CE04 on that side. And arguably, it's a more stylish and it pulls this more naked body style. So much so, it looks like a Honda Monkey or an evolution of such. Okay, at the front here, you get this full LED headlights with this gold fork colors. And for our market, it's come standard with this highlight all black livery, which comes with this all black function and with some of this petrol color accent. Okay, in terms of size, you can see the bike is actually pretty small and I'm standing 175cm tall and it's slightly smaller compared to your typical cup size or moped but at the same time it weighs almost the same at 132 kilograms so this is not a lightweight bike despite its size all right so in terms of power thing, the ce02 uses a single e-motor setup that drives the rear wheel via a drive belt instead of the drive chain and this motor is rated at 11 kilowatt or 14.8 horsepower and 55 newton meters of torque so goes to show that even it with minuscule horsepower which is almost similar to other 150 cc bikes out there the sheer torque output is quite impressive 
consider this being an EV so of course we got rapid acceleration on it and promises a very fun riding experience okay speaking of riding it's got three riding modes which is flow surf and flash flash is being the most powerful one and according to BMW this bike can go up to 95 kilometers per hour so meaning it's not really the sharpest in the shed but at the same time like I said earlier because of the sheer number of torque you can really have lots of fun with this bike nonetheless all right so in terms of battery the local spec CE02 comes with two battery packs one capacity at 1.96 and these two combined to deliver 3.92 kilowatt hour of power so according to BMW this bike can go up to 90 kilometers of EV range which is not so much but I have to say for urban use that's more than enough okay in terms of charging you get the charging port down here but unfortunately this bike doesn't come with the type 2 AC plug just like the CZ04 for minute you only need to be charged this bike using a dedicated charger with a 3 pin plug and according to BMW it can charge from 0 to 100 in about 3 and a half hours so I have to say for your daily users you can just plug it in when you got home and you can use it for tomorrow so it's somewhat practical if you use it in the urban setting okay in terms of the riding ergonomics you can see this is a pretty small bike and it sits quite low to the ground and you only got minimal ground space here so in terms of foot pack position it is quite positioned nicely but i have to say for those who are riding with pillion the rider really need to sit at the front which as a result makes your arm a little bit bendy so it feels a little bit awkward at first to ride this bike but eventually you're gonna get used to it and in terms of button else i will see all the buttons are laid out pretty well especially on the left side here you get the reverse button yes this bike comes with a reverse gear you got the control for this 3.5 inch TFT display you also got the horn buttons and the turn signal but unfortunately on the right side it's get a little bit confusing because you get this unlock buttons to unlock the seats but the riding selector button is located a little bit down here so it's a little bit hard for you to access especially when you're riding at higher speeds in terms of overall I have to say for those who are really familiar of riding a cup chai or smaller scooters and whatnot you are not gonna feel a little bit alienated on this bike because it feels like just your typical small bike so nothing much for you to adapt here all right, now that you know both our bikes a bit better, let's find out how they're really like to ride. Let's go, Muklis. Okay, so in terms of riding, so the CE02, the first thing that you notice when you ride this bike is how quick and how torquey it really is. Because like I said earlier, 14 point horsepower might be standard for the bike of this size, but 55 liters of torque, that numbers for a mid-size super bike. Okay, immediately once you pull on the throttle here, you can really feel the bike pulls away. And even if you're riding in the standard flow mode, this bike can really, really pull. And I have to say, it is quite fun at the first, but at the same time, it can be a little bit dangerous for those who are not that familiar with that kind of power but i have to say for beginners take it easy bit but once you get the mastery of the bike this can be a really fun bike because fun because of thanks to its small size this bike also feels very nimble and very agile so you can just carve your way through any traffic congested areas with ease and you can just slither your way through any cars or traffic with relative ease because again thanks to its small size and i have to say you can really have a bit of fun because mind you bmw call this not an e-scooter they term this as an e-park Cool. so theoretically you can do some parkour actions with this bike if you're willing to or if you've got the skills but i have to say for those who just have a very fun riding machine then you can look no further or the ce02 here okay in terms of top speed of course we talk about 95 kilometers per hour it's not really that fast but i have to say even if you're riding this bike on highways you can still catch up with other traffic because you can cruise on this bike rather comfortably at 80 to 90 kilometers per hour but unfortunately because of its open design everything you really feel a bit misplaced when you're riding this bike on high because it feels like you're riding a bicycle compared to other bikes or of course other cars and vehicles on the highway so it can be a little bit a daunting experience if you're riding this bike on highway so that's why i advise to use this on purely urban settings only and this bike is surely gonna try okay so in terms of battery of course we're gonna say 95 kilometer of range is very minuscule and not really so usable but i beg to differ i think if you're really using it like i said again strictly on the urban usage just to go to commute to your office like 10 15 kilometers away i think this is somewhat usable and as long as you have a charging port ready at your home i have to say you can technically daily on this e parkour so overall this is a very 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 fun bike to ride i test to it and i really think that you should at least try it once in your lifetime to ride this all electric scooter right let's talk powertrain and performance and aptly speaking in the ce04 it's very electrifying because underneath its pretty skin the ce04 houses an 8.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that powers a real electric motor that drives the rear wheels through a belt drive system as shown earlier now the outputs are rather meaty 41 horsepower and 62 newton meters of torque yes it may not sound like much but it actually puts the ce04 on par with most 500 to 650 cc maxi scooters 
Now, what that translates to is a scooter that can actually get off the line very, very quickly. In fact, BMW touts an official 0 to 50 kmh sprint time of 2.6 seconds. I've personally done a 0 to 100 kmh dash with this bike on my weight. It does it in about 4 seconds, give or take. Now, that's supercar-like acceleration. However, there is a caveat to all this performance, and I believe it's driven by the need to preserve the e-motor and the batteries. What I mean by which is that the CE04 has an electronically limited top speed of just 120 km an hour. Nevertheless, the news is not all that bad because the CE04's powertrain offers four selectable ride modes, those being Road, Dynamic, Rain and Eco. And should you put this thing in Eco mode, it offers relatively good range. In fact, BMW touts a minimum of 130km on a single full charge. In terms of charging, you'll be glad to know that the CE04 comes equipped with a familiar looking Type 2 AC charging port. Now, you could charge this up using any existing wall box charger and it's charging at a rate of 6.9 kilowatts. This lets you fully recharge the battery 0 to 100% in just about 1 hour 40 minutes. However, should you be in a dire situation and you happen to have 3 pin charger that I have stored underneath here, now this one lets you fully charge the batteries from 0 to 100% in about 4 hours and 20 minutes. It's a bit slower because this one dispenses just 2.3 kilowatts. Whew, that was a hoot and a half, wasn't it, Muklis? Oh yes, exactly. All right, we've deduced that both bikes are equally fun in their own right. And perhaps let's also agree that it's unfair to compare both directly because they both serve very, very different purposes. Well, you got that right. Because in the bottom line, the CE02 is a more perfect urban company because of its small size. And you can actually have fun with it if you really know how to. But of course, at the same time, it serves as a perfect first to last mile solution. Whereas the CE04 ups the NT by giving you that added extra range especially if you are living outside of the city in the suburbs and you need to commute on longer distances you also have the added bonus of power and i will also add that you'll get quite a lot of style and a lot of tech while you're at it here too now we get to the bottom line of things price and there's no hiding it Muklis. both bikes are really really expensive yes exactly so for the ce02 it starts at 38,500 ringgit on the road whereas the ce04's base price starts at just under 60,000 ringgit now i don't know about you but compared to most other combustion bikes out there these are really really expensive choices but for those who can afford it you will be rewarded not just with zero emissions but you get lots of style lots of tech and above all lots and lots of fun am i right Muklis? absolutely now if you don't mind ladies and gentlemen Muklis and i want to continue having more fun riding these bikes if you enjoy content like this as usual don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below don't also forget to like share and subscribe and don't forget to visit chaikas.com for more we'll see you in the next video Take care.